making sure you deliver the expertise through customer care versus making it easy to do business where you can fully automate things? Yeah. So, I mean, really, you know, and, and I think most of us, if not all of us, have interacted with a chat bot on a website, right? <laughs> Hi, this is Matt, the host of the CX and Culture Connection, the podcast for CX leaders looking to boost their ROI by paying attention to their customer experience and culture together. I'm excited to be here today with Ryan Holt, who is the Director of Customer Care at Floor & Decor. Welcome, Ryan. Hello. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, just to, uh, to get us going... Um, Kudos to you guys. Floor and Decor was recognized by Fortune as one of the 100 fastest growing companies. Um, how has customer and employee experience contributed to your company success? Yeah, I mean, so we're, we're in the growth mode that we're in. Um, truly, uh, you know, one of our biggest challenges is how do, we, how do we scale this thing? How do we scale our processes? Uh, be it customer experience, um, how we interact with our customers in the stores, our website. Um, how do we continue to to scale all those things and um, you know, take advantage of the momentum that we have in the market? Um, you know, I, I can tell you that uh, from a, a customer experience perspective, um, we have a, a really big focus on pros. So, um, you know, pros are the ones who come back time and time again for flooring. Um, versus a, a do-it-yourselfer who might change their flooring out once or twice in their home, right? So um, pros are a big focus for us. Um, we understand that um, the customer journey, it doesn't just live on the phone. It doesn't just live in chat. Um, and it doesn't just live in the store. It's really an omni-channel experience. Um, so we've really tried to meet customers where they want to be met. Um, we've made some advances with our chatbot, um, our pro app, loyalty programs. Uh, there's been a lot of steps taken to really hone in on our primary customer, which is that pro. However, you know, with our, with our product, we know that, um, you know, we, we've got a, a wide range of products, uh, really a category killer in, in hard surface flooring. So um, we play to our strengths a lot of times, right? We, we know that we have a, an, an immense selection. Uh, we want to get that out to people, make them aware uh, that we're a price leader as well. And, uh, you know, make sure they, they come to us at, at some point in, uh, in, that, in that flooring journey and search. So if you're working with pros who is a do it for me as opposed to do it yourself play in home improvement, how does the uh, brand of Floor and Decor connect with the pros? What is it about the brand and the CX and how, uh, that makes you appeal to the pros? Yeah. So, you know, I, and I won't mention any, any of our competitors, but they're, they're pretty big household names. And, um, you know, if you were to walk into, um, a home improvement store, you might see a, a small section dedicated to flooring, right? I mean, a, a couple of small samples and vignettes set up. Um, if you walk into a floor decor, it's dedicated to that. Um, you know, our, our pros can stop in and get what they need right away. Uh, they know there's going to be a loyalty program tied to that as well. Um, so that, that immense selection, um, that great experience with a pro manager that sits in every store, um, that white glove service that they receive, that's that's really a, a critical part of our of our mission and of the way we deliver CX is that you know flooring actually is really complicated. It's if it's done wrong and it gets messed up, um, or if we make a you know if a pro goes out and they they do a bad job and, and we don't inform them the right way on the product, um, it can it can ruin a relationship, right? So uh, we want to make sure that we're very much uh, tied into that that pro experience, even the training that they need the product knowledge they need, the product support they need on the back end as well as we have that shared customer. Um, you know, it, it's really at the end of the day, um, if a customer has a bad experience in one of our stores and one of our pros is, is working on the job, there's there's some, um, you know, some, some shared um, customer experience issues there. If there is an issue or if there's a great uh, story to tell, a, a great shared story. Uh, where we both win so we, we want more wins than losses obviously and we, we get a lot of those that's why we're in the uh, in the place that we are right now do you have any personas in mind when you're you know you mentioned pro versus a an, an individual um how do you think about the personas uh, you know the segments that you're marketing to yeah so i you know and i i am not not in the marketing team but i, I can tell you that um i'll give i'll give you i, I would say a summary view of that um 
to give you an idea of, of the approach. And if you were to walk into a floor and a core store and you had all the time in the world, you could stay there from open to close, uh, you would find that the, the customers change a little bit throughout the day. Um, early in the morning, you're going to have your pros pulling in. They're working on their jobs. They, they need to load up their material. They need to get out the door right away to get to the, the customer's homes or the commercial setting, wherever that product is going. Um, as you move into the, the middle part of the day, I, I think you see more do-it-yourselfers. You'll, you'll start to see those do-it-yourselfers kind of, kind of sprinkle in. They're asking a lot of questions. Um, they're trying to, and many, many times, just to find out if, if they have the expertise to even do the project. Uh, so they're going to they're gonna ask us some questions around that. Um, and then later in the day, uh, we, so we have these vignettes set up um, throughout that, that have kitchen and bath, right? So you'll see some backsplashes. So you'll see, see some bath uh, vignettes. And a lot of times that's a, that's a d- designer, right? So a designer um, is a much different kind of customer. Um, but two out of those three experiences are pros. And truly, even the one in the middle, even the do-it-yourself or buy-it-yourself, or they're a lot of times we're going to get a, a pro involved. I can tell you that on the back end, as we look through our data, sift through it, we find that 75% of all of our products that are sold are installed by pros. Um, they may not be our pro with our loyalty program, but they're a pro of some sort. Um, could even be part of our program with IME installations made easy that does installs for folks that buy products at our stores. So how do you um, think about the the journey then? Like when, when, about what are the moments that matter in the journey and the emotion you want to you know evoke at those peaks? Yeah. So I mean, we have a visualizer uh, on our website. Uh, we want to get people excited about the product, excited about cha- making change. Um, you know, really, there's a lot of art to this. If it's done right, and I mean, all of us have a kitchen, all of us have a bath, all of us have a floor we're looking at, right? And the the, the last thing you want to do is have something you have to look at all the time that's just not right, right? That just doesn't. And we've all been there. You you buy a new home, um, you know, you look around. There's just just some things you probably want to change, you know, that that maybe are either dated or um, another style that just doesn't fit you and your family. Um, you know, that's what we're, we're hoping to, to really tap into, I think, right, is that 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 need for change uh, to, to better yourself, to, betting, to better a living space. And if we're doing that the right way and we get people excited about the products, the vignette is a great example. I, I invite anyone to go into one of our stores and take a look at a vignette. And you, you can't help but get your imagination going a little bit around what you could do in a kitchen and bath space. Um, or if you take a look at our samples in, in, the, in the wood section, or, or laminate, you're going to see not a little cutout square like you might see some of our competitors. You're going to see the product laid out in a much more realistic setting, what it will really look like on your floor. So you know, between that and the technology around the visualizer, we hope to get people really excited about making a change and about upgrading, right? So upgrading, making things better. Um, and that, that's really the drive for it. And we're trying to not only make that a, an in-store experience, but also try to augment that with technology. Ryan, a lot of what you're talking about here um, often gets talked to as shopper solutions, which is going beyond the product, providing inspiration, providing content. It really sounds like you guys are curating solutions and you've got the expertise of your people, but you're also creating digital tools that inspire people and help inspire confidence for them to, in, to work on their projects. You talked about your visualizer. Is that an example of this? It is, Matt, and that, that was really a great way to summarize it. it. It truly is curating all these products, right? I mean, so we have access to international suppliers, the most suppliers in this space, and Italy, Spain, Turkey, um, Vietnam, wherever it needs to come from, and USA. Uh, the USA, we, we've got products as well. So um, we're pulling in all that. We're curating that. We know what's hot, uh, what people are going to want. Um, we can see the trend lines with the sales and the just stylistically the aesthetics of things that are, that are popular at the time, uh, very much plugged in as, a, as the, you know, the major player in the space and hard surface flooring. Um, and that we, we do take that on and, and take that very seriously in doing that. And then, yes, the, the visualizer is there from a technology perspective um, to help that, that rubber kind of hit the road, right? It, it, it's flooring is a, it's a large kind of cumbersome product, right? It, it's not uh, an Amazon two day ship, product. It, it's something that you want to touch, feel, and see uh, prior to purchasing. And if you can see it in its native environment where you really want to, you know, maybe an example of how it could sit in your home, that's really critical to making that decision. So 
technology like the visualizer, having people drop in in person, if that's what needs to happen as well. Um, either way, we, we try to bridge all those gaps and, and great, create a great experience there for anyone. In, um, in markets where it's um, either B2B or bulkier products, you don't naturally think of e-commerce. But what you're highlighting here is there are ways to engage them on their journey that get them over speed bumps. Either you know they learn about something, they see how it fits, they learn more details, and they keep going in the journey. And maybe they do fulfill e-commerce, maybe they come into the store, but you keep moving them through the journey in a way that's, you know, productive. Absolutely. Uh, you know, if you, and I think really when you're looking at the website and um, you get an idea of what is out there to help support you as a customer, try and do business with us, um, you know, free design services, uh, pro support. Um, if you do buy it yourself, that, that partner to help you install it through IME, um, you know, all of those are, are out there for you. And uh, the, the website does tee that up. Certainly it, it, it really, it, it helps us curate the products. Um, it helps us sell, um, helps uh, customers get the information they need to make an informed decision on their, their flooring decisions. So, I mean, you know, it's certainly all there and it's a great touch point to get started. It's really cool that you have such a um, engaging digital experience, but I think you also mentioned um, how you differentiate around the in-store experience, around the assortment, the expertise, the connection you have with people. Um, how do you think of that right balance of digital experience, like what's physical, what's digital, and where you're where you're really focused to create a good customer experience? Uh, you know, so again, in the, in the omni-channel approach, I, I, I think that it's uh, meet people where they want to be met, right? And um, there is uh, this is not this is not a product that's a um, sit down and and you know not put a lot of thought into it and just impulse buy. Um, I, people are going to think about it. They're, they're going to look at, they want to see some samples. We have a sample program as well. Um, they're going to want it. They're, they're going to want to come in, uh, touch it, feel it, see it. Um, you know, so, so truly, um, you know, the, the physical side of things, I, I think that's an opportunity for our, our associates to, to make that connection. Right. And, and show that expertise, that, that level of expertise, um, while, uh, you know, the, the website really it's self-service, right. And, and we're, we're striving for self-service as well in customer care. So th there's a there's a blend there, I think, where, uh, you know, you have a chance to talk. If you go into one of our stores, talk to someone that is, you know, they're aligned by category. They know their category. They know the products that are needed to support the install of the product. And you're going to get that that one on one uh, consultative type sales approach. Um, good, better, best, like you see in many uh, retail settings. And then you, you have the self-service model, I think, through the through the website which is very helpful as well in the journey. What does um, self-service really mean from a customer ex experience standpoint from you? Is it problem resolution? Is it speed of ordering? Is it you know them better? Like what what defines good self-service for you guys? So for, for customer care, I mean, really two different lenses to look at this. I mean, uh, you know, the sales side of it, um, you know, self-service, I mean, you, you think about, you know, if you were to look at like a, an executive white paper, um, something like that, where, um, you know, you, you think about the, the strategies you see around that with enterprise level sales, right? Where you're, you're trying to get people um, to interact, to, to engage with the content. Um, we do that in a similar fashion with the website as well. Uh, we want people to interact with the content we have there, interact with the products, uh, get more informed, um, you, you know, as, as we're going through that, that, uh, that, that session. So um, there's that. Um, so, and then, of course, you can take it all the way to sale uh, if you're able to visualize it, certainly. Uh, but we, what we have found is that 80% of our customers, they're going to visit a store and the website. They're, they're going to do both. Um, so we're looking at through that, that lens. Uh, very likely, they're going to they're gonna go to both spots. And, of course, there are some sales that are outside of area. Uh, they're, they're not in a geographic region of a floor and decor. They, they do happen. However, the majority of those, they're, they're going to be kind of a, a blended um, customer journey uh, on the the service side of things. Um, really, we're trying to set more portals. I mean, that, that's our thing. Um, self service portal for claims, um, you know, e pay portals, uh, gift card portals, things of that nature. Um, and, and you see a lot of people in retail uh, doing that right now. A lot of organizations. Um, the, the more self service, the better. Um, from a customer service perspective, um, again, can they pick up the phone and get a hold of someone if they need to? They certainly can. 
uh, but to have the option to sell service. Uh, you know, and I, and I think some other retailers out there have, have trained us as a society um, to to seek self service. You know, be it you know, like like Amazon, right? It's like you have a return, you, you print off your return label, you get your return right away after they scan the label. Um, you know, but but you start that process. You don't you don't call into a call center typically to start it. And you know, so a lot of companies are, are striving for that. Um, also, you know. Really, the, so there was a there was a downturn um, during the last crisis around 2008, 2009 in birth rates. So th- this highly impacts retail as well. Uh, the, the human capital element, it, it's going to be stressed in a couple of years. And that's why you see a lot of these uh, retail uh, boards and C-suites interested in AI, interested in automation um, and self-service really dovetails well into that, into AI, right? So it's like, okay, if we can get them, you know, if AI can help drive the beginning or the end of the journey, and then self-service is there layered in as well, and maybe, just maybe, we don't have to have that human touch. Maybe it could be automated, um, especially from a customer service perspective. Then it, it gets exciting to the business, right, to be able to do that and the customer experience. If done right, you, you hope that doesn't suffer either and you have a great experience. So in customer care, I could see that there's problem resolution that might require, you know, you can automate it, but you have to decide how, how, you know, how to evaluate when a human being needs to be involved and when you escalate it and how to train the AI to do what, what you need. In some cases though, there's people have expertise that are harder to replicate in an AI, at least it's getting better, but uh, what's the right balance for you guys in terms of, um, you know, making sure you deliver the expertise through customer care versus making it easy to do business where you can fully automate things. Yeah. So, I mean, really, you know, and I think most of us, if not all of us, have interacted with a chat bot on a website, right? From a customer care perspective or sales perspective, from a customer care perspective, it's right. They're really trying to deflect a lot of the phone calls. So uh, what you're going to see across, and I'm just talking to other customer care pros, um, you know, a, a, across many businesses, phone calls are down. Phone calls are down across the board because the chatbots are getting so good, you know, that to your point, they're being tuned the right way. There's a lot of shared data there uh, that is applicable across a, a lot of different businesses that, that makes sense in that in that environment, the chatbot environment. Um, so if the chatbot's doing its job, it's actually eating up those phone minutes and you're, you're getting less calls coming in, right? So, and it does change the customer experience dramatically. However, it's much more on the rails, right? When you've got them in the chat bot, uh, sure, there could be some questions that come through, but a lot of it, I mean, there's, there's AI um, and just, just the level set here on AI, right? There's, there's generative AI, which is, was huge in the news, right? I mean, every C-suite and uh, board of directors wanted to learn more about generative AI uh, last year and you know, a couple months ago. I, I think there's some fatigue there because we talked about it so much, um, but, but AI has been around for a long time. Um, you know, especially in the chatbot environment, I mean, it, it, all of these, um, uh, you know, a knowledge base that is um, driving answers to the customer, leading them on that customer service, that quest to get service, right? Like, you know, the, the more quickly we can close that loop and get them deflected into the right bucket, the, the better the experience. So um, it's much different than the sales bot where the sales bot's trying to Take them down this the sales journey. Take you know, get them uh, further along in, in the sales journey. So um, certainly the service bot is doing that, but it's also trying to get that that resolution. Where hey, we've got a case built, um, we've got this customer on the way to resolution of their issue. You know, just uh, just take a half step back for the audience. Um, there's a, a really cool um, video I saw with Qualtrics, which shows a race of all the different sources of listening, and it showed you know, like social media versus uh, call centers and um, chatbots and and messaging and other things. What's really cool is like the chatbot outpaced social listening in volume of data signals last year. So there's an enormous increase in the amount of chatbot, which is a listening post you can listen to. It's it's one of the tools that you can not only engage the customer, but it's a source of feedback and you have 100% coverage of those conversations, which is if you do a post, you know, call survey, you're getting, you know, anywhere from 15 to uh, 30, 40% of people to fill it out, depending on your response rates. 
with the, uh, the, the chat bots, it's actually both action and insight at the same time. And to Ryan's point, there's a lot of different flavors of chat bots in one hotel company, as an example, um, they were, um, you know, at a hundred times the volume of chat bots of surveys. So like the growth of the chatbots explosive, it's actually part of stimulating engagement during the journey. It's not just a customer care practice. Absolutely. I mean, the virtual assistant, right? I mean, it's, I think it's everyone's had exposure to it, comfortable using it. Um, you know, text is out there too. And it really the, the chatbot versus text, it's synchronous or is it asynchronous? Um, uh, so in, in, with text, of course, you're asynchronous. Um, but some people like to be met that way. They like to be able to respond when they want to respond, right? The, the one thing about the chatbot that you worry about is abandonment. Um, are they going to are they going to stay on the chatbot and stay engaged? Um, are they going to get frustrated and you know like they used to like in the old call center environment um, hit the, the zero button to try to get a rep or you know, get an agent, right? So um, same thing happens with the chatbot. Um, you're trying to have it be driven, have have the have the robot do the work. Uh, but there's live agents there too, right? I mean, they they can they can hit the bail button and get a live chat agent. Um, but but you're right. I mean, you know, it, it's one of those things where we're gathering a lot of data. Um, you know, we're able to really deliver better service in, in, a, in a lot of ways, and still give the options of, of deferring to a phone call or wherever else, wherever, wherever else they want to go, right? So, uh, the, the chatbot is certainly um, it, it's somewhere that everyone's looking to get stronger in, and um, you know, AI makes a lot of sense wrapped around that um and then the the, the pressures of of the the human element of trying to just find people uh you know our path to to grow into 500 stores um you know we're halfway down that path we need to have these you know our, our plan is going to happen it's it's going to happen right so um how do we keep staffing in all these different uh you know retail locations so you mentioned ai a moment ago, um, and uh, we showed remarkable restraint that we didn't dive into AI in the first few minutes of our conversation about customer experience. Um, how has the way you approach experience management evolved, Ryan, as you've adopted some of the capabilities that you can power with AI? Yeah, I mean, so and as I mentioned, um, there, there's there's AI, there, there's generative AI, which is was the, the hot topic last year. Um, and this year, um, AI has been influencing the chatbots now in, in knowledge bases. I mean, for a number of years, um, the self self service has been in, it started to influence things a couple of years ago. Um, it's becoming more influential. Um, a chatbot supporting uh, you know, a self service portal. Um, there's there's ways to intertwine the technology to create a better experience. Um, you know, and we, I think we've all been in there um, on a page where, you know, you have the chat option uh, while you're trying to go through self-service. Uh, I think ideally, and, and, you know, one of our, one of our, our main focuses for, for me anyway, for my teams um, is around claims. So um, if you were to file a claim through State Farm, um, through FedEx, uh, through a freight company, whatever it might be, um, much of that is self-service. Ideally, there, there's a lot of self-service there where you're, you're getting your claim started. Um, you're logging into a portal. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of automation going on there to get the process started. Is a human going to have to touch that in between? Most likely, um, but at least the front end and the back end of the process can have a lot of automation. So, I mean, as we, we look at the full process, the full journey, we try to, to bolt in automation where we can and we, we start to shrink the need for those human touches as they go through the journey. I mean, ideally, that's what we're striving for. Those one call resolutions, you, you love those. Um, those one session resolutions, um, you know, we measure those. Those KPIs are important. So, I mean, ultimately, um, AI automation, along with the self-service model, you, you start to, to drive a ton of automation to what you're doing. And there's certain parts of the business where it just makes a ton of sense, uh, claims being one of them. How do you measure the improvement in the customer experience? What are some of the metrics that you focus on to drive outcomes? Yeah, so the metrics are, I mean, depending on what channel, it, it really the, the channel and the metrics around that um, will vary a bit. Um, you, you've got your typical, um, you know, call center metrics, um, you know, a ton of data around the chatbot. Uh, you know, are we, are we you know, coming to a resolution? Are we having abandonment issues, um, you know, surveys? 
um, trying to get as, as much information we can from surveys as possible. Um, all of those are, are critical elements. Uh, we, you know, our North Star for, for my team is case age, really. I, I can tell you an open response time, uh, first response. Um, some of those are, are, are critical. Um, we, we feel like that the longer they wait, we're more, the more we're going to pay, um, is, especially in the, in, the, in the claim space. So um, we've really made that our North Star. Uh, we've tried to be world class there. Um, we've, we've had a commitment to that. So um, looking to automate there, certainly in the way that we not only the way we intake claims, but also in the back end. Um, the, the way that the people sign a resolution, e-sign versus uh, sending over documents in a, you know, a fax or you know, whatever it might be, or email, whatever it might be. Um, you know, so uh, trying to, to lean on e-sign and e-pay as well as, as another uh, future enhancement, uh, you know, digital gift cards, things like that. Um, trying to create a, a fully digital experience anyway uh, to reduce friction on the back end also. Um, a lot of these escalations that we deal with in, in service, I mean, you know, you can make a, a really happy customer. You can, you can deliver a great customer experience um, uh, a lot of times. Uh, however, with, with claims and some of these escalations that are, they're, they're not a, a super happy customer, um, we're, we're trying to, to have them come back ultimately. And whatever we need to do to make that happen. You know, yours is a really interesting business because it's, um, it's, got an emotional inherently emotional aspect because of like home improvement and people take that very personally and they're working on projects they even if they're working with a pro it's still something that connects with them and they, they feel very personally invested in it um and but it also has some elements of what you're describing that have similarities to like healthcare and financial services where there's very much a quality management mindset of how do we reduce touch? How do we improve the cost of quality? How do we improve re resolution? So you're balancing this um, great experience design with a continuous quality management cycle together. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and as we grow, I, and that, and again, our, our, our mission um, to be number one in the space, um, scalability is critical. All of our processes, all of the ways that we, that we interact with the customer, we want to make sure there's something we can replicate. Hundred, hundreds of times over, uh, millions of transactions, and uh, to, to set us on a good path for the future. Well, kudos to you guys that you're paying so much attention to your role and the collaboration you have with others on customer experience and how it connects with employee experience. Because uh, when a lot of companies go through that hyper growth like you guys had, and they fi figured out that product market fit, and then they grow, it can really stress the business out. You know, like how do we preserve what makes us special as we scale the business? And you've you've got a model that you've been able to preserve some of that uh, secret sauce even as you scale the business, which must keep you busy. But it must be feel good to see the results you're getting. Absolutely, and you know we're we're always looking for for new ideas, right, and uh, new ways to to tackle this thing. Uh, but you're right, there there's some basic blocking and tackling uh, that we know if we if we stay on on target, good things are going to happen. Um, you know, and that, that's certainly the, the mindset it will iterate as we go and as we, we grow the business, but, um, overall, uh, certainly we're, we're going to in a great spot and, uh, we'll keep, uh, we'll keep heading forward. What's the connection between the contact centers and customer care and the store level engagement? Like how do you guys, you know, create that seamless experience between the store manager and the frontline people and customer care? Well, I mean, truly, we you know we have our, our external customers and our, and our internal customers, and um, you know, in, in terms of customer care, uh, I, I can tell you the stores are they're, they're the lifeblood of everything that we do, uh, truly. So um, it, it comes first, right? And we have a shared customer many times. That, you know, most of our interactions are again with people that have been in the store. So um, there, there are many situations where we're working collaboratively uh, to to solve an issue for a customer to get them even further along in the sales cycle um, or to resolve an issue that might have you know, taken place at the store. They, of course, you can imagine um, another one of my teams handles uh, shipping. Um, so, you know, you can imagine shipping some of this product around, um, you know, finding ways to, to not only get it staged at, at, the, at the stores themselves, but then ship from the stores many times uh, to locations. It, there's a challenge there. Um, and we work very collaboratively to get that done uh, on, on the claim side of things. Um, obviously that that's post sale, um, that's post install as well. Um, you know, products 
they, they can fail. Uh, it, it's very rare, but they, they can. And that, that's what the claims team does, right? So the claims team is going to step in when there is an issue and uh, take them through the process. Their flooring inspectors are involved. Uh, we take it very seriously to make sure that we deliver a great customer experience there. At the very least, we'll, we'll inform customers why there might be an issue, right? There's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of installers out there and a lot of great installers out there, um, but occasionally they, they will make mistakes, right? So, um, you know, having those conversations around it, I mean, it's not just buying the product, it's also getting it on the floor and, and making it really work, right? Having it in the right setting. Uh, different products are rated for different environments. Um, I'll give you an example. There are some tiles that, yes, they're, they're rated for outdoor use, but maybe they're not rated to be used around a pool, which is, there, there's a lot of wire on the ground, right? Then it becomes a hazard uh, to, to, to people. Uh, we've seen some things like that where an installer is taking a product and put it in an area that it shouldn't be. And um, the liability there, things like that, right? So th there's a lot of considerations, um, you know, and ultimately it, it's, hey, how, how do we get people informed? Um, how do we not have a lot of those issues arise? In in an earlier um, podcast that I had with uh, jo Joseph Michelli, who wrote a series of books about culture and customer experience, um, one of them about uh, leading the Starbucks way, and he's also written about Ritz Carlton and uh, Zappos and a number of other leader brands. You know, he talks a lot about the behaviors that you want of the employees, and I'm hearing that from you also, like that you really want um, to identify a set of core behaviors that you have of the people on the shop, on the store floor, in the call center. Uh, you know, in the, in the Starbucks example, he talks about behaviors like um, uh, anticipating, connecting, personalizing, and owning things, owning the outcome, like that they actually train for that. How do you, how do you think about the training and the behaviors that you want of the people in the call center and how do those differ from the, the store? Engagement is critical. We, we want to make sure that the team is, number one, they have the product training they need because they're going to get questions about product, but also to be able to deliver a great customer experience. So it, it truly is a blend. There, there is there's certainly more product knowledge needed for this role um, than some other call center roles uh, or folks in customer care. I can tell you our claims team, there, there's people that have flooring inspector training uh, that could really in, inspect your floor and give you a readout on that. Um, and that's the level of exper expertise needed for that kind of escalation. So depending on what channel you, you land in, um, you could get someone that, that's very qualified on the phone or uh, in chat or, um, you know, corresponding with you from the customer care team. Um, and really, we, we try to specialize those skills, right, and, and, and try to have someone that's able to, to handle those types of calls and interactions. So um, getting the training in place, making really a, a transfer of that store knowledge to the call center, to the customer care team, that's really critical. A lot of the members from our team are from the store. That That's kind of that, that's a, a career progression for them. Um, so many people on those escalation teams have that, that experience with customers that I think is really critical um, when you transfer to the phones or to a digital channel. Yeah, and there's, I've seen that in other markets like consumer electronics where people who have product expertise and often store uh, experience end up uh, thriving in the call center environment and they're able to um, bring that expertise and that service ethos into the contact center environment as well. Um, and then as we talked about before with AI, what's really cool now, Ryan, is you can actually listen in the calls to see whether the call was congruent with the behaviors you want. And you can create a faster feedback loop. And because you can listen to the call, you don't need a survey to ask how the person did. You can actually mine the call. Yeah, I mean, voice analytics uh, as well, right? I mean, voice analytics, I mean, you're able to sift through a lot of data very quickly. Look for keywords, right? Make sure that the keywords are being delivered. Um, the, the keywords you don't want to hear as well, right? I mean, all that can be aggregated and summarized. Um, certainly, uh, you know, our, our Q, QA process, um, there's a lot of technology behind that. Um, a lot of observation of recorded calls. And you hope the technology can can really, I mean, reduce the friction for that team as well. Um, to your point, maybe, you know, 10 years ago, uh, you'd have someone just listening through recorded calls looking for something, right? Now, the voice analytics and, and the, the technology that's out there, you can start to aggregate, summarize, and get right to the, you know, to the, to the root cause very quickly. 
what I would encourage people to do is like and subscribe to the podcast and go back on, based on what Ryan was just saying, check out two podcasts that build on what Ryan's saying. One is the podcast with um, Chris Taylor from Actionable, when we talk about uh, behavior activation and how you can actually drive behaviors in your organization with your frontline employees and uh, call center reps. It's about behavior adoption and getting the, the right skills, but also the right behaviors and, and that you want in people. And then second would be um, Sid Banerjee. The, uh, he's the chief strategy officer. He was the, he was the chief strategy officer um, at Qualtrics um, and uh, helped uh, launch a bunch of AI businesses. But in our podcast, we talk a lot about modern approaches to listening, which as we were just talking about, you can apply to the calls to drive continuous improvement. So you get behavior adoption combined with continuous listening is a faster improvement cycle uh, to do what, what Ryan's talking about. Um, Ryan, um, you know, any parting thoughts or, or observations about, you know, where things are headed and, and what you're most excited about in, in CX? Yeah, you, you know, I, I really, for me, I, you know, this model of self-service augmented by AI, um, you know, I, there, there's so much talk about AI replacing people, but I think truly what it does is it augments people, right? I mean, it, it can make people better. And I think in my mind, that's the vision for it. it. It's augmenting people, making their jobs easier, helping us deliver a better customer experience, ultimately, that is going to be great for everybody. And um, if we're able to, to gain some things, um, you know, on the, on the back end of things from a, you know, financial perspective or... Um, yeah, you know, the, some of the other lenses you have to look at the business through, that that's great. But let's lead with customer first. Let, let's do that um, and our people. So if, if we're doing that, we're augmenting them with AI, delivering the great customer experience with AI. Um, I, I, I think that combined with the, the self-service model is really the path that, you know, I, I think makes a lot of sense uh, moving forward. Ryan, you, I really enjoyed our conversation. You've sparked a lot of great ideas for me. I know you have for the audience as well. If people wanted to get in touch with you, um, what's the best way for them to do that? Is that over LinkedIn or some other other way? Yeah, LinkedIn is fine. Um, certainly open to take messages there and uh, certainly happy to, to speak about these topics with anyone. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Ryan.